بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآله السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, tonight is the last uh, majlis that we have and we thank Allah for giving us tawfiq to have these majlis uh, and at the same time we are sad and uh, we are going to miss uh, these majlis and these days and nights of Muharram. I hope inshallah we can continue this discussion uh, in Muharram and Safar somehow so that we can also complete our topic. As you know, we said one of the people that we can consider him as a helper of the cause of Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam in its true and full sense is the late Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Qadi Tabatabai who managed to live such a life that we can consider him as really a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an ayah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interestingly they have published a book on him called Ayatul Haq. It's a very beautiful name they have chosen. He was really a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also an evidence for the truth of uh, many uh, spiritual points. So if someone has doubt about Alam uh, Ghayb, about soul, about Barzakh, about ability of going beyond time and space, there are many, many uh, uh, stories received from reliable sources related to him and his students that would leave no doubt. So they are, he's really also Hujjatul Islam, is a Hujjah, is a proof for the truth of this religion and this path. We said the late Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai was born in the month of the Hajj in 1285 uh, Hijri Qamari and died in 1366 uh, Hijri Qamari in the age of 81. He was born in Tabriz and died in Najaf. When he was 23 years old, he went for Ziyara to Najaf and then decided to settle there until end of his life. He was uh, a resident of Najaf. Maybe he was traveling, but he was a resident of Najaf and uh, died also in Najaf. When he was 21 years old, uh, still in Tabriz, two years later he went to Najaf, uh, he did something which is uh, well known and that is he uh, worked on Al-Irshad by Shaykh Mufid Rahmatullah Alay. You know, this book of Shaykh Mufid is on history about the lives of the Imams and in the age of uh, 21 he did, uh, did a Dharo, uh, Dharo wor uh, work by having 10 different versions of Irshad and checking them and correcting and editing which is uh, very well received by the uh, scholars. He was uh, able to become Mujtahid uh, very soon and in some sources in the age of 27 he became Mujtahid and he used to teach uh, different subjects 
many times he used to teach at home or in a small hojra in a room in madrasa he was avoiding having very public or you know common places to teach he was teaching fiqh usul but also he was teaching other subjects and what is interesting is that allah tabatabai rahmatullah alai says that i have learned method of tafsir al quran bil quran from ayatullah qadi tabatabai you know we have uh, different methods of interpretation of the Quran. We discussed it also in the course on the Quran and the book is there. One method is Tafsir al-Quran bil quran And this method was there before, but Allah mastered this method. And in the beginning of Al-Mizan, he talks about this method. That the idea is that because Quran is Tabiyan and Lukul Shay, so for sure this book must be by itself clear is nur mubin kitabun mubin so must be clear and if you really understand the language of the quran and tune yourself to the quran you should be able to understand the quran with the help of the quran al quran yufassiru ba'dahu ba'dha wa yashhadu ba'dahu ala ba'dh of course to reach this point you need to be trained by ahlul bayt but you can reach this point so Ayatullah Allah Metabatabai says, I have learned this method from Ayatullah Qadi Tabatabai. So maybe not many people knew this, that he was this much of competence about the Quran. And also he himself was uh, involved in compiling a tafsir of Quran. And it is said that he reached uh, the verse 91 of Surat An'am. An'am, but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, he didn't manage to complete this tafsir. Uh, another thing that Allah says he benefited a lot from Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai is Fiqhul Hadith. How to analyze and interpret Hadith. We have many sciences related to the hadith you know one is you know about uh, verification of the hadith authenticity of hadith you know al murrajal but also how to understand the hadith and he says uh, ayatollah qadi tabatabai was great in fiqhul hadith another thing which again is uh, mentioned uh, by allama tabatabai is that uh, he says when he went to Najaf and you know he had his uh, lessons from great teachers in philosophy uh, about Hikmat al-Muta'aliyya, transcendent philosophy of Mullah Sadra. Then a time came that he thought that he has understood everything about transcendent philosophy. And even if Mullah Sadra was there to teach him, uh, there was nothing more to understand. But he says, when he attended uh, sessions of Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai, although Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai was mostly focusing on teaching Irfan and Fiqh and other things, not that much philosophy, but he says the way he explained philosophical ideas uh, opened a new way to me, and I realized that I had not understood anything from Mullah Sadra and transcended philosophy. Uh, and this shows the difference in the level of understanding. He had uh, great teachers, he had learned, for sure he was able to teach. But he says, when I went to the other level, uh, I realized that I had not understood anything, it just was surface. So this is also something very interesting, that how much Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai uh, had reached the depths of these sciences. He used also to teach uh, uh, you know, the book of uh, Ibn Arabi and he was uh, also very good in Arabic uh, poetry and uh, it is said that Ayatollah Mamgani that we mentioned uh, yesterday, who was a great teacher and an you know, expert on Fiqh, Ilm al-Rajal, etc. Ayatollah Mamgani uh, said that 
I can understand which uh, poem is said by Arab or by non-Arab. Even if it is in Arabic, I can distinguish between Arabs and non-Arabs when they make poem. Ayatollah Qadi was his student. So he started reciting poem. And the poem was, was by an Arab, but inside he inserted some of his own poems, which he just made, composed. And Ayatollah Mamgani was not able to understand. So this was, although he's in a Turk from Iran, you know, Turkish and Farsi, they were, you know, maybe his main languages, but he had learned so much Arabic that he was this uh, much competent to make even poem in Arabic uh, to the extent that that great alim could not distinguish. Before I go to his uh, spiritual uh, instructions, I also should mention one of the books that uh, he has, which of course, again, is not unfortunately completed, is a commentary on Du'ai Thamat. Uh, this also unfortunately uh, didn't finish. And it is said that in the last two years of his life, he was working on this uh, commentary and he managed to comment on one-third of Du'ai Samat. And this is uh, published in Iran, in Tehran. The first time it was published about 15 years ago. Uh, he himself was very much uh, committed to reciting Du'ai Samat uh, Friday uh, afternoon and he had a majlis of reciting and commenting on this du'a in his house in Najaf. Uh, he has some poems, for example, he has a poem on Qadiri, uh, on Qadir, it's called Qasideh Qad Qadiriye. So these are some of his uh, writings. And we mentioned yesterday his uh, teachers uh, and uh, students. So now, inshallah, we move on to some of his ideas and instructions and recommendations and then inshallah I will try to uh, summarize his method. Uh, one of the things that it's very clear in the life of Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai is his complete commitment to Sharia. Sometimes people who are uh, spiritual uh, then they take Sharia and Fiqh easy and they allow themselves exceptions or they allow their students exceptions. Sometimes, for example, they say, you know, Sharia is for the beginners and then later you don't need Sharia. But Ayatollah Qadi was very, very much committed not only to obligatory rulings of Sharia, but even to recommended uh, issues and dislike, you know, mustahabbat and makruhat to the extent that th some people who didn't, you know, agree with him and were uh, critical of him, they were saying that, you know, uh, he is doing too much these things. They were questioning this. But it was the, his way from beginning that he tried to observe all wajibat and all the mustahabbat and avoid haram and makruh very much. And he was emphasizing on this also to his students that there is no way by, you know, failing doing some of your wajibat or doing some haram, you can do something, you know, great in getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, interestingly, uh, he was suggesting to his uh, students that they should become mujtahid. Most of his uh, students were uh, scholars. Of course, we have someone like Sayyid Hashem Haddad who was not a scholar. But most of the students were uh, scholars. And he was telling them that you should become mujtahid. And the reason which is mentioned uh, am I, there might be other reasons, but the reason which is commonly said, I saw it in different places, is that he says, 
you have to become mujtahid because when then some uh, for two hearts, some openings happen to you in spirituality, then you have to be mujtahid to do what to do at that time. Through taqlid, you may not be able to find proper answer. You must yourself be in that situation with ijtahad to know what you should do. So even uh, for making sure that you don't miss anything, he was saying that you must become much ahead. So full commitment to Sharia uh, is one of the characteristics of his uh, school or his method of spirituality. Uh, one of the things that uh, I found uh, about him and his students, for example, is about uh, looking at uh, Na Mahram. He was very, very careful about this issue and in one place says that he had so much trained himself about not looking at Na Mahram that he had reached the point that his eyes were spiritually trained. And before Na Mahram comes, his eyes were closed. And some of his students, for example, Ayatollah Quchani, that uh, inshallah we should talk about him because he was his wasi, says that uh, when we were students of Ayatollah Qadi, uh, in the street or in the lanes, you know, uh, whenever Na Mahram was coming, our uh, uh, glance or glaze was dropped. So they had this maybe also help from their teacher or they were trained like this that uh, automatically uh, they were avoiding uh, looking at Na Mahram, let alone Na'uzu Billah having haram look. Even uh, there is a mention about Sayyid Hash Hashem Haddad that once his mother said, uh, your wife is more beautiful than her sister. And uh, he didn't say anything and his mother was surprised and he said I have not seen her she said she comes you know the, when we have meal you know together she comes she said I have not seen her so he had not seen uh, the, uh, her sister-in-law despite many years of uh, marriage okay so full commitment to uh, sh uh, shari issues even to this level of uh, avoiding uh, even encounter with haram. Another thing which is very important is that he had great attention to the Quran. For him, Quran was very, very important. Uh, in one of his letters, he says to his student, you should recite the Quran alaykum bi qira'at al Quran al Kareem fi al layl bi sawt al Hasan al Hazin fa huwa al sharab al Mu'minin. You should recite the Quran in the night with beautiful, sad voice, and Quran is sharab al Mu'minin. That sharab, that in heaven will be given to inhabitants of heaven that sharab that would uh, take uh, the one who drinks it fully and you know makes them forget everything and you know even forget themselves uh, these are you know positive impacts of that heavenly sharab it's not that it uh, disturbs or destroys or harms your aql, like worldly sharab. Worldly sharab harms the body and harms aql. But the heavenly sharab is reducing your attention to yourself to the extent that you may not, uh, you know, sense yourself and you would be fully taken by your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No worries, no stress, nothing. So he was saying that Sharabul Mu'minin is Quran. And if you tune yourself to the Quran, you can get 
you know, maximum pleasure uh, from reading the Quran. Uh, he also uh, said that uh, reading uh, the Quran with beautiful uh, voice and observing manners, especially during the night, is you know like Qurratul Ain is something that brings joy to your eyes and peace to your eyes. And his idea was that it should not be less than one juz per day. So one juz of Quran every day should be recited. Another thing that he was very much recommending was Salat. So the same thing that we all know, but maybe we don't really give attention and uh, contemplate. So about Salat, he has this famous uh, saying, and Ayatollah Bahjat has narrated this, and Ayatollah Allah Tawatwai has reported this. I heard myself from Ayatollah Mispa. Uh, reporting from you know his teachers Ayatollah Bahjat and Allame. Uh, I don't remember he mentioned both of them or one of them but in the books uh, they say Ayatollah Mispa said both so anyway there are many people who have said this from different people I heard from Ayatollah Mispa that Ayatollah Qadi used to say if someone says his Salat or her Salat always on time and does not reach high levels of uh, spirituality and nearness to Allah, he should curse me or can curse me. So uh, some people even have said, you know, something worse than this. But what I heard was that he, he, they can curse me. So he was so confident that saying Salat on time would make you, you know, gradually so much uh, attracted to Salat and then through Salat you can connect to Allah and reach what you want. He used to also say if you protect Salat, Salat will protect you and will protect everything that belongs to you. Uh, some of his uh, students say that uh, you know, he said to them, uh, the last two, three days I have been thinking uh, what would happen to us if in heaven uh, we are not able to say Salat. If we don't have Salat in heaven, what we are going to do? So they were so much enjoying Salat that they were worried about if it's not any more applicable in heaven, what should we do without Salat? He used to also say to his students that if you are busy with Salat, inside the Salat or Zikr, you must uh, focus on uh, Allah's beauty and Allah himself and not let anything distract you. If anything happens to you, uh, you should not let it distract you. Even thinking about heaven should not distract you. You must be focused on the creator of heaven not heaven and it's famous a story that you must have heard Ayatollah Tehrani mentions also in uh, Mehrat Aban that he had given uh, some advice and Allah Metabatabai uh, was doing that and he had told uh, him that uh, maybe generally students not to be distracted if anything happens and when he was in the middle of this uh, Abada and Zikr and contemplation that he had, he saw a uh, Hori, an angel, approaching him and offering a cup. And he immediately remembered the instruction of his teacher, so didn't pay attention. And that angel came from the other side. Again, he didn't pay attention. And then with a sad face, left Allama. And Allah says that I always remember that sad face, but uh, it was his teacher's advice that they should not let anything to distract them. 
So sometimes, maybe with sadness, you have to make a decision that would in the long term be better for you. Uh, he was recommending uh, Nawafir, especially Salatul Layl. Allah Metabatabai says in the beginning of his arrival in Najaf, actually before he took any lesson, he went to Amirul Mu'min salam and asked for help, for guidance. Then he was visited by Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai. And he was a great alim. Alam is a new talab in Najaf. But uh, because they had some family relations, so they somehow knew each other. But this great man, Ayatollah Qati, went to see him before waiting for him to go and see him. And he told him that in Najaf, along with your study, you have to take care of your you know, spirituality. And then another time, he put his hand on the shoulder of Allame and said, if you want dunya, you should do Salatul Layl. If you want Akhirah, you should do Salatul Layl. So Salatul Layl was very important part of his uh, advice. Another thing is that although he had uh, you know, many karamat and many things are mentioned about him, but he was very, very uh, secretive about this issue. And he was telling his students, uh, first of all, these karamat are not important. And you should not pay attention to them. You should not let these things distract you. And if they happen, you should not inform people about this. Your behavior, your presence, your uh, real life, should be enough to tell people, you know, about spirituality. You should, as much as possible, keep these things secret. Uh, it is said that once uh, Sayyid Hashem Haddad, who was, uh, you know, working, uh, he had a person who was working with him, an assistant, and he used to divide all the income with him and that person who was working with him. And his job was to make, a, uh, you know, uh, I think um, they called it bl a black uh, ethmis, if I'm not mis uh, mistaken. Someone is Haddad, you know, working with iron, you know, melting iron, making knife and, you know, this type of things, instruments. So they had to put uh, uh, iron in the oven. And when it's red and melting, you know, bring out and then, you know, with hammer, uh, heat and make what they want. So they have something that uh, they could hold uh, hot, you know, iron, but he didn't find it. So he took it with his hand and this person who was working with him didn't know such thing. So he ran away. After some time with uh, Sayyid Hashem Haddad met Ayatollah Qadi, Ayatollah Qadi was very unhappy with him and criticized him. You know, why you did this? So he was aber and he criticized him. And he said that once, Ayatollah Qadi said, once I was in a situation that because of some uh, issue of uh, you know, embarrassment and haya, I had to mention one sir, one secret, and still after many years I am suffering why I shared that. So their style was as much as possible to keep things, first of all, uh, confidential and also not to pay attention that much to these things. Ayatollah uh, Najabat, who was in Shiraz, uh, Rahmatullah, and died. Uh, um, maybe about 15, 20 years ago, you know, uh, I was in Qom when he died. Uh, he was uh, a student of Ayatollah Qadi, and after Ayatollah Qadi, he became a student of Ayatollah Ansari Hamadani. So he says, you know, sometimes people used to go to Ayatollah Qadi and talk about their mukashafat, you know, their visions, you know, spiritual feelings. 
and sometimes you know what they were talking you know f uh, as uh, you know a person who is you know explaining a story you know half an hour and Ayatollah Qadi was listening but not showing any you know you know kind of excitement or whatever sometimes just you know was saying ballet ballet and um, sometimes you know he was saying to his students that uh, these people have some uh, experiences but if you say uh, they are right there is a problem that they may think their understanding is right if you say wrong they may you know d doubt everything so for him this was not a big issue and this is interesting because many people unfortunately go for a spirituality for having these things and what is interesting is that he himself for 40 years he says i didn't have anything even <laughs> some special dream any mukashifa any dream anything for 40 years and he didn't uh, stop and one of the things that uh, his uh, students mentioned is that he had the idea that isma azam is istiqama to be steadfast this is the greatest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you keep trying and trying and trying finally the door will be opened and he had the idea that if the door is open to you soon there can be danger because you are not prepared for that and you can end up with uh, losing everything or going to wrong direction for uh, people who are persistent and the door is opened later there is a great chance of continuity and strength he used to say that it is like uh, you know digging the earth with your finger this path is so difficult that you have to dig till you reach water but don't uh, stop you will reach water and then like a next size of camel water you know would come but even then don't uh, stop continue because there is more to come so istiqama was very important many times we don't have istiqama we want to reach something quickly you know in few months few weeks few years he waited for 40 years and as you might know it was uh, very unexpected no, many times these openings happen unexpectedly so he was in Karbala and uh, before going to the shrine of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam there was a person that looked mad and people you know considered him as a mad person but he said something to Ayatollah Qadi which was very special but Ayatollah Qadi didn't think that is significant because this person was mad you know sometimes says things that doesn't make sense he said to Ayatollah Qadi that today uh, the master of the awliyaullah is Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas he is the head of the people who want to be Arif and our Arif he didn't think this is something significant so he went inside the shrine did the uh, ziyarah of Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas and then did salat of ziyarah and then his condition changed I found the most detailed version of this in what Ayatollah Nijabat has said and I like to uh, read this for you So it says that Ayatollah Najabat says when he said Takbiratul Ihram for Salat al Maghrib, he finds that the situation around the shrine of Hazrat Abu al Faz is totally different uh, in the way that no eyes has seen, no ear has heard, and has not occurred to the, any heart. So he uh, stops a little 
uh, doesn't do the qira'a so that he can you know uh, calm down and a little he becomes you know normal then again it comes back so he tries to uh, reduce mustahabbat of salat and uh, finishes his salat quickly and even he doesn't go to haram of Imam Hussein because he normally goes uh, there also after Hazrat Abu al-Fazl and goes home and in order not to talk to the people he goes also to the roof of the home and lies down again that condition happens and lungs stays longer then some of his family members bring him tea that condition goes then he wants to do his Asha prayer again that condition comes and then he says that something happened to him that um, he had never experienced and he says that uh, uh, he could not you know cope with this uh, Ayatollah Najabat uh, says that uh, he was not able to remain in his body and he was not able to come out they bring him dinner again this stops but in the middle of night again this condition comes back and stays longer so this was the beginning of opening of the door to him and he says whatever i wanted i got and he said uh, this is due to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and of course gate of Imam Hussein is Hazrat Abu al-Fazl alayhi salam so this was the result of 40 years of uh, steadfastness and istiqam uh, one of the people that was close to him is Ayatollah Husseini Hamadani not Tehrani another person Husseini Hamadani he says I was in Madrasaya Qawamiyya in Najaf and I saw Ayatollah Qadi came to the principal of the school and said I want a Hujra he was a alim but because he had a large family and his house was small and he didn't want to disturb them when he has tahajjud so he asked for a room so they gave him a room uh, upstairs and he says you know uh, i was very very impressed by his akhlaq and behavior and his tahajjud and even he says you know when he was going for tahajjud he used to remove his shoes so that he would not you know uh, disturb anyone when he's walking so uh, ayatollah uh, Husseini Hamadani has many things about Ayatollah Qazi Tabatabai and um, inshallah we may mention some of these things that he said uh, about Ayatollah Qazi Tabatabai One of the things that he used to say was that uh, you should have a teacher, but not a uh, teacher who is not complete, a teacher who has gone all the four journeys of spirituality. You know, there are four journeys for as far, you know, that one has to go through and f the last one is that after you finish your journey uh, inside the realm of uh, God then you come back towards people and then among people you go with God so he had the idea that if you uh, spend half of your life to find a good teacher it's worth and having a good teacher is like half of the journey uh, but of course uh, it might not be possible always but the main thing is that you keep asking you keep asking you keep imp uh, practicing what you know and then when the time comes that you really need it inshallah you will be given the teacher 
Ayatollah Kashmiri, uh, who was one of the students of Ayatollah Qadi, he says that Ayatollah Qazi used to tell us that it is the role of a qualified mentor to give zikr. The number, the type of the zikr, it's all relevant, are relevant to the condition of the person. And for example, what type of zikr for empowering a person strengthening their willpower for a strengthening uh, I don't know their spirit for risk for Tawheed and said everything has a measure and a right teacher knows what to give and he says for example uh, sometimes some adhkar uh, which are for Tawheed if uh, is they are not done properly they can bring poverty and people can become poor and they may not be able to cope with that p uh, poverty because sometimes poverty is a way. So lots of uh, things are there that no one should take zikr uh, without prescription of a company teacher and no one should take one zikr too much without recommendation because they can, you know, have side effects. About Estaqama, I found uh, in uh, one place there was a poem by him that it is very interesting. Uh, it says, Do not be impatient like a person that when the door is opened, it goes away. Some people, unfortunately, as soon as the door is opened, they don't continue. They are satisfied with it. The door is open. <laughs> Few things happen to them. They are happy. Valzam. Remain. Wakon kamithleman in futehalbab valaja. Be like the people that when the door is open, they enter. Like as I told you, with your finger, you dig when you reach water, still keep digging, not to leave. About Estaqama, he says, if someone is persistent and steadfast the great name of Allah greatest name of Allah would settle in his uh, spirit and he would be qualified to receive secrets and he was referring to verse 30 of Surah Fussalat that uh, would be able even to hear angels Okay, uh, there are many things to mention, but I want to end with the core of his method because uh, I don't know when would be our next session. I want to finish this. So the core of his method, although different things have been said, and unfortunately, I had myself a uh, no experience of, uh, you know, having any direct uh, uh, encounter with him, you know, his generation is two, three generations before. But the way I have read and I heard from people who knew him or their teachers knew him uh, gives me this impression. And some people have said uh, things like this. I want to put them together that it seems his main focus was on Tawheed. Something that you can see greatly present in uh, Alama Tabatabai also. That Tawheed is the main thing. Alama Tabatabai in the uh, first volume of, uh, so, sorry, not in the first volume, in another volume of Al-Mizan, I mentioned in uh, Unity of God and Unity of God, 
uh, or in lessons on Islamic morals also, that his idea was that Quranic system of morality is not based on result and outcomes only, which many uh, schools of uh, ethics, they say, you know, good actions have good results, bad actions have bad results, or about reward and punishment, which in many religious uh, ethical systems are there. Quranic system is based on Tawheed and awakening the sense of Tawheed. I think this was very much due to the teachings of Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai. For him, Tawheed was a very important thing. And even in his Vasiya, he says he couldn't teach Tawheed to his family. Uh, some students, like Sayyid Hashem Haddad, he had the idea that they understood Tawheed. And Tawheed means that you really believe that Allah is the only supplier of good, the only person who possesses things, the only owner. Right from Tawheed, he had a method. So we can say Tawheed is the general framework. Out of it, he had a method that he used to call ihraq, burning. You can find trace of this also in Allah's explanation. What is ihraq to burn? Means that you burn the roots of vices with tawheed. He was saying there are references to this in the Quran, and one is. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. If you keep thinking that you and everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't own anything, even you don't own your ideas, your existence, your nafs, let alone your family, children, money, etc. You don't own anything. If you manage to think carefully about this and achieve this sense of poverty and nothingness, you can burn the roots of all the problems. This ihraq was very important. Maybe for some people, look, this is just a you know, concept, you know, this is just uh, uh, something you say. Yes, but if you really manage to contemplate and reflect on this and do it, it's very powerful. And you would not then worry about anything and you do not, you know, become, you know, jealous, you do not become, you know, selfish, etc. All the vices will evaporate, will be burnt. Uh, Ayatollah Qadi's student, Sayyid Hashem Haddad, uh, has a beautiful uh, experience about not how he reached the point that he didn't worry about anything. Uh, you know, he had a mother-in-law that was very disrespectful to him, very, uh, you know, harsh lady. and. Ayatollah Qadi was advising him that you must be patient. And he was so much, uh, you know, being hurt by her and, you know, humiliated that wanted to divorce his wife. Ayatollah Qadi said, do you love your wife? He said, yes. Does your wife love you? He said, yes. So he said, you cannot divorce her. You must be patient. This is your uh, way of you know, spirituality. So one day he was very tired and went home to have a little rest. And his, his mother-in-law started uh, swearing at him, shouting, cursing. He didn't say anything. Just to avoid uh, confrontation, he went to the roof and wanted to have a little rest there. 
she didn't stop and started again and in this time she raised her voice neighbors heard and you know was real embarrassment he didn't say again anything to his mother-in-law but couldn't uh, tolerate anymore he went to the uh, desert outside city he d didn't go, you know, uh, anywhere. He got nowhere, you know. He just went outside, you know, just uh, out of, you know, being desperate. And then he says something very amazing. He says that then I saw there are two of me. One is very unhappy and sad feels humiliated and the other one is very calm and happy two said Hashem and one the normal said Hashem that I am used to it the other one no worry no stress nothing and then he realized that uh, because of his patience and you know the way that Ayatollah Qazi had instructed him with his mother-in-law he reached this point that he could experience his real self and get rid of those worries and then he went back home and started kissing the hand of his uh, mother-in-law and said you know thank you very much <laughs> so this emphasis on استقام, and seeing yourself as someone who has nothing of his own and just being uh, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even more than a servant just as you know shadow or something you know like that then would open the door in different people, in different times, different situations, in different relations, different contexts, maybe someone with his mother-in-law, maybe someone with her husband, maybe her father-in-law, maybe with a neighbor, maybe with a colleague. I don't know, maybe through other ways, maybe through charity work, maybe through public, I don't know, um, sometime condemnation, as Ayatollah Qazi himself, for example. Uh, he sometimes received very bad treatment. Sometimes they removed, you know, his sajada from uh, h under his feet. Sometimes they wanted to kill him. Uh, or Ayatollah Quchani, that uh, Ayatollah Qazi told him that towards the end of your life you will be very lonely, but then you will reach. And the last few years he was very lonely. Even his family were not there in Najaf. And but he reached Alhamdulillah. So, if uh, someone is observing Sharia, is paying attention to Salat, and especially doing Salat on time, doing Nawafil, especially Salatul Layl, making a special relation with the Quran, and then deepening our sense of Tawheed, and with mm, the germs, spiritual germs, you use the method of ihraq, burning, and keep thinking in order to achieve this and add your ma'arifatun uh, nafs, all the problems will be solved. This is a summary of his method as much as I could understand and organize. Uh, I know that. Uh, this is uh, easy to say, but it's uh, more uh, difficult to practice. But on the other hand, there is no other way. There is nothing great that you can achieve easily. But Alhamdulillah, there is lots of uh, clarity here and lots of things to support this. Okay, I, I stop here. I hope that inshallah we can continue this series with discussing about the lives of some of the students of Ayatollah Qadi and other scholars but through the lives of his students we can maybe clarify more his method. Tonight is the last night of our program and also according to some uh, uh, narrations is the night of martyrdom of Imam Sajjad according to some view he was martyred 
in the months of Muharram, 12th of Muharram. Also, after Karbala, uh, it is said that in this night, night of the 12th, uh, the family of the Prophet and family of Ahlul Bayt were taken towards Kufa, and this night they kept them outside Kufa. And the next day, uh, maybe they took them inside, maybe they wanted to prepare, to decorate, etc. So this is also a sad night of them staying outside the city of Kufa with all the tragedies that happened to them. So I want to share with you this poem about Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. I don't know what we have achieved in these nights and days. Uh, I don't see anything uh, valuable that I have done, but uh, we have hope. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please don't let any person uh, leave this majlis tonight without your kind attention and without your kind favor and without our hajat being granted. If there are obstacles, you know, please remove them, please help us to remove them because this is our last chance and our last night. So we want, inshallah, all of us to have lots of gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our reward for our little adha for Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. As-salamu alayka ya Abu Abdullah وَعَلَى الْأَرْوَاحِ الَّتِي حَلَّتْ بِفِنَاكِ عَلَيْكَ مِنِّي سَلَامُ اللَّهِ أَبَدًا مَا بَغِيتْ وَبَغِيَ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين كوتها يا مدينة وبوي زخمها كم يعاد چشم های سپید یعقوب و بوی پیراهنی که می آید The condition of امام زین العابدین این مدین افتر کربلا was somehow like Prophet Yaqub when he was very sad for losing his beloved Yusuf and at some point smelling the fragrance of Yusuf مرد سجاده ای که درک نکرد هیچ کس آیه مقامش را در حیاهوی شهر کوفه نداد هیچ کس پاسخ سلامش را امام زین العابدین whose position was so high that no one can understand, was treated in Kufa with such lack of respect that they even said reply to his salam. 
تا از آداریش شروع شود دیدن شیر خاره کافی است He was always mindful of the tragedies of Ashura to the extent that looking at an, at an infant was enough to make him cry. Any infant could remind him of Ali Asghar. Ta azadariyash shuru shavad didan shir khare kafis. تا صدایش به گوش ما برسد دیدن گوشوار کافیست من نمیدانم این که خاکستر چه به روز سر امام آورد I don't know what did to head of Imam when they put and throw ashes on the head of Imam Sajjad. Zir zanjir peykar sardaj mojize bud agar davam avar. I don't know how a man managed to survive with his illness and tiredness and tragedies and is still carrying the chains. <laughs> Giram as das de kufra had jod, sang teflan shamra chekonad. The tragedy increased when they arrived in Kufa. Imagine how bad was the treatment that Kufa was more painful than all the tragedies of Karbala. Seeing people who are celebrating and who are looking at them. But still it was better than Damascus because when Imam Sajjad was asked when was the most difficult time he said Asham Asham. So the poet says Giram as das de kufra had shod sang teflan sham ra chikonad. Suppose that he is now no longer suffering from people of Kufa, but what should he do with the children of Sham throwing stones at them? Giram as das de kuche sang nakhorat, mardum push de bam ra chekonat. Even if they don't receive these stones from people on the lanes of Damascus, what about those people on the roofs who were throwing stones? Ta in ke marde qafil zindast harfi az tifl karavan nazanid. As long as this only man of this caravan is alive, please don't mention anything about Lady Rogaya. Pisha in Marde Gerye John Hussein Harfi as Chub Khaizaran Nazanid. Please in front of Imam Zainul Abidin, don't mention about what Yazid did with his sticks. Allah la'natullah ala al-qawm al-zalimin. Wa sayya'lamu al-lazina zalamu wa yamun ghalabin yan ghalibun.